How's it going everybody? In today's video, we are gonna be taking a look at how to create a custom Elementor widget. Um, so this is the one that we're going to be recreating here. It's just called advertisement that you can see over here on the left. And then we just have three different types of text fields. We have a little small heading up here at the top, a larger heading, and then we have a WYSIWYG area. So if you click into one of these, we uh, created each one of these controls over here on the left, two text fields, and then a WYSIWYG. And then so you can, you know, type in here and, and delete things and you'll have the update here on the right. Uh, same goes for these two over here. So if we wanted to change that text, but the nice thing is, is you can also click into this one. And so if you wanted to underline heading or, you know, you have this nice little toolbar or you can say, and some other stuff too. So you're actually editing in line over here. So I'm going to walk you through how to do all of this. And remember, if you are new here to subscribe to the channel and ring the bells to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress tutorials. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so let's get started. Just a couple heads up on this one is that this is a super basic tutorial. We're not gonna get into anything fancy. This is mostly about how to just get a basic widget up and running. Um, so the first thing I want to point out here is that we are just using the new 2020 theme. Hooray. It just came out today. So that's really fun, right? Um, the next thing is we are going to be installing the Elementor plugin. You have to have that installed. So we're just going to go to our, uh, plugins and click install now on the Elementor page builder. So once that is installed, we're going to activate it. So activate, and then we're good to go. We don't need to do anything else here. We can go and add a new page just so we can kind of get an idea. You can click add with or edit with Elementor up here. And we don't have the advertisement widget because we haven't built it yet. So uh, that's the first thing that we're going to do is learn how to get into the Elementor system and start adding our own widgets. So we're gonna jump over to the code next. Let's go to Visual Studio Code here. And I've got my WP content direct, direct directory theme and 2020 right here. So I'm gonna open up functions.php. And then we're just gonna require a new file. And this is where we're gonna do some of our loading here. So we're gonna do require once. And then we're just gonna do custom elementor.php. We haven't created that yet. So let's create it. We're gonna do custom elementor.php. And this is where the magic is going to happen. We don't need to do anything else in functions.php. So we need to have a place where we can tell Elementor about our custom widgets. This not, we're not creating the widget itself here. So we're just going to open up some PHP tags and then we're going to give ourselves a namespace. It's very important that we give ourselves a namespace here. And I'm just going to do WPC for WP casts because uh, Elementor is very good about namespacing itself. So we wanna make sure that we have our own namespace to work with as we start adding things. So we're gonna call this a class. We're gonna create a class and we're gonna call it widgets loader. And we're just gonna open up and close that. We're gonna need a place to actually call all of these. Um, the one thing that this probably needs to be is a singleton. Now, if you're not familiar with singleton classes, it just means that there is a single instance of this class that gets called every time something needs to use it. With traditional classes, anytime that you need to use it again, it will spin up a new version of that class and you start using it. If you need it again, it's going to spin up a new version. This one's different in the sense that you spin it up once and every time that you need to use it, it calls that one. So it's actually a pretty easy way to get going to uh, create a singleton class. And that is first creating this private static uh, uh, variable, or I guess property is what it's called, um, called underscore instance. And we're just gonna set that to null because when this first starts up, we, don't, we wanna make sure that it uh, is null or not null, which you'll see down here. So if the instance is null, then we need to set itself. And if it is set already, just return what's already set. And that kind of sets up that single use uh, scenario. 
And then so down at the very bottom at the, of our file, we're going to just create that instance. So hopefully that makes sense. There's a lot of like uh, blog posts out there about how this kind of thing works, but yeah, that's what we're gonna be using here. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add something to the construct method. So when the construct method is when this instance first starts up, we need to add an action to Elementor widgets, widgets registered. So this is something that is specific to Elementor. They have this action and we want to hook into it. And when we, when that action is called, we want to run a function called register widgets that is in this class, but we haven't created that yet. So let's go ahead and create that. So we want to register our widgets. And so we're going to create a new method inside of here called register with widgets. And we are going to include some widgets, which we haven't made yet, but then we are going to, here, let me collapse this so it looks a little bit better, is we want to use a method that exists inside of Elementor. And we want to use Elementor and on its plugin class instance, widgets manager register widget type. And then we are going to be passing it in a advertisement class. And so we need to actually um, set up what that class is. But in order to do that, we actually have to require the file first. So like I said, we need to um, include our widget files. So let's do that. So we need to include widget files. And so we're just going to require um, an advertisement.php. So what this is going to have in it is this is going to have a class called advertisement in it, and that's what's going to get slurped into the Elementor workflow when register widget type is called on the widgets registered action. Hopefully that makes sense. So we have everything set up to actually have a new widget here. If we wanted more widgets, we would kind of do something like this where we'd have you know multiple widgets here. So this would be something else, this would be something else, and this would be something else. But since we're just doing one widget here, we don't have to do that. You could even do something fancy like reading a directory and just instantiating all of the classes that exist inside of that directory, but we're being lazy right now. So this is what we're gonna do. So as that is, uh, as it stands right now, we are good to go. We just need to go over to our um, theme over here. And we, like we said right here, we need to create a widgets directory. So we're gonna create a new folder called widgets. And inside of that, we're gonna call it a new file called advertisement.php. And here is where we're actually going to create the widget itself. So we need to start off by opening up some PHP tags. And then we need to set up our namespace again. So we are in that WPC namespace and we're gonna be in the kind of sub namespace widgets. And then we're gonna be using a couple different Elementor namespaces. We're gonna be, oh, doesn't like that. It's, we wanna use Elementor's widget base and controls manager. Widget base is going to have a lot of methods that we can tap into in order to uh, actually create the widget. It's, it provides us some with required methods. And then on top of that, the controls manager is actually what gives us those things on the sidebar, the uh, text fields and WYSIWYGs and those kind of things. And that's where all of those are held. So we're gonna be using those. And then just a little security thing, if the abs path isn't defined, we're gonna just exit out, just say, don't try and access me directly. And then so every time that you're creating an Elementor widget, you need to do this. You need to extend widget base. And so this is uh, kind of like what I was just saying. It has all of the methods that we need in, inside of there. So we need to make sure that we have those. So the next few things that I'm going to bring over are some required methods that we need to define and have a return out of. So these guys just kind of set up the user interface for a widget. So you have things like get name, get title, get icon, and get categories. So hopefully you can kind of put two and two together is what these do. This is the slug of the widget. The title is the human readable label that will appear underneath the icon in, the, um, in that sidebar. So that's something that the user will see. And then the get icon is a font awesome class. So you can kind of use the online cheat sheet 
to just pick an icon out of there. And then the category is in the sidebar over there. It's everything's broken up into small kind of subcategories. So it's just going to say, which category do you want this widget to belong to? And you can even name something like WPCast in here. Um, you would have to set that up, but um, you can create custom categories. So after that, we need to start actually setting up the controls. That's the first step. We need to add some, um, we need to register the controls is the proper terminology. So um, we need to create a new function here or a method called register controls. And there are a couple parts to this. The per first part is setting up sections. And then the second part is setting up the controls themselves. So we are gonna just create one section here and these go in order. So the order that you place these in is the order that they're going to appear in the sidebar. So first we start by calling this method here called start control section. We haven't set that up, but we don't have to because that comes from widget base right up here. So that's one of those methods that we get. And then, so we're gonna call this section content and we're gonna call, we're gonna have a label of it of section settings. So if you had multiple, it's like an accordion at the top. So you can expand and collapse these control sections if you wanted to separate them a little bit. So you need to start it and then you also need to end it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have uh, this end control sections. And then, so anything that we put inside of here is all the controls that we want to have. So this is where we're gonna setting up, be setting up our two text fields and then our WYSIWYG. So there is another method that now we have access to called add control. So this add control, the first parameter it takes is the slug of that control. And then there is a lot of different settings that you can add to uh, these controls but we are going to stick with uh, a pretty basic three for right now. Label, which should be pretty obvious what that does. The type, this is where we're using that control managers class. And we are saying that we want it to be a text field. And there's a whole list on the Elementor website of what kind of controls are available. After that, we have the default. What is the default value of this text field? There's stuff like placeholders and stuff like that, but we're just gonna have a straight default value here. So after we've added this first control, we're gonna add our second control, which will be almost identical, which we are just going to have as content heading. And then lastly, we have our um, WYSIWYG control here called content, and we are using the control manager to bring in a WYSIWYG. So other than the type itself, it's the exact same fields. So now we have our controls here, but we don't actually have anything outputting to the page. And so there are two different types of uh, methods here that we're going to be implementing, and we're gonna be implementing both. The first implements the kind of PHP and HTML side of things, meaning that's what's gonna get output to the user. And then there's the backbone JavaScript portion of this, which is kind of what that live preview interface is going to render. So those two things are going to look like this, and we're not gonna fill them out quite yet, but I wanna show you what the methods are called. So the first one is called render, and so this is our PHP render. So this is something that is not interactable, but it is something that, or it's the PHP version of it. So it's not going to be as interactable. The next thing here is the content template. So I just think of this as the JS render. And so inside of both of these is where we're actually going to be echoing out the markup. So what we're gonna just do here is echo out an H2 saying I work, and we're also gonna be doing the same thing here um, where we're gonna be calling I work in JS as well. So let's take a look at how that works. So let's go back to our Elementor page and let's hit refresh. Let's see, error class not found. All right, I think I know what's going on here. It says widget loader, we named ours widgets loader my bad there. So if we come back and refresh, we should have our page, which we do. 
And then if we scroll down to the bottom, we now have our advertisement. So let's go down here and drag that in. It says, I work in JS. So that's great there. And then if we come over here and start typing in something else, we shouldn't see anything. That's that's exactly what we wanted. We don't we don't really care what's going on here. So when you click out of it, you get the PHP version. When you click kind of in here and start to kind of mess around, it swaps it out with the JavaScript version. So that's kind of how that interacts. So what we need to do next is we actually need to output what's going on in these fields over here for both PHP and JavaScript. So we are going to have to do some duplicate work in both languages, but the result is really nice. So we're going to take a look at that. So we have our advertisement.php and then we have our two methods. So what we have to do inside of these two methods is set up a couple special, um, what are they called? I guess functions. We have a, or we have to set up the options, I guess is a better way to put it. So we have our settings and there is another method that comes from widget base that is called get settings for display. So that's going to go out and grab all of those things that we saw right here. So it's going to grab the values for that and come back in an array. So we're going to have that. And then what we need to do is set up the HTML for this. So I'm going to just grab this and bring it all over. We're going to end our PHP and then start it back up again. And we have this guy. So I'm going to actually remove this so we don't get too distracted. Um, and we're going to get rid of that and we're going to get rid of that. So this is kind of what this will look like by default. We have just our regular old HTML inside of here. And then we are taking items out of this settings and we are just displaying them here because they're just coming back as strings. We don't have to worry about like images or anything like that. We're just echoing out what's coming back from those arrays. So the next thing that we need to worry about is the actual like inline editing portion of that. How I said when we were actually typing into that heading up at the top, that's what I just deleted. So we're going to start, we're going to focus on that now. So we need to create this inline editing attribute. So this is um, actually setting up the attributes that Elementor is going to look for. So we're saying for the label heading, which matches this right here, we're going to give it the basic toolbar. And then there's also none, there's basic, and then there's like advanced, which just have more settings in there than, than the basic, but we're just gonna use basic for now. And then we have to add this. This is a um, kind of compiling what is inside of this uh, inline editing attribute and it is allowing us to add a class on there as well. So the first thing, the first parameter is the slug of the thing that we're going to be attaching this to. And then the second parameter is an array of attributes. So you could do things like ID, you can do things like class or data attributes, that kind of stuff. And you'd give it an array of classes. The reason why you have to do this is if you were to sit here and try and just output the inline editing attributes into this div right here, along with your classes, it just straight up won't work. So you have to do it this way. And so what that's going to eventually use is this guy right here. This method is going to output the, comp the both of those things together into this attribute string. So it's going to take label headings, um, like inline editing experience. It's going to take the, any attributes that we want to attach to it. And then it's going to use this, uh, get render attribute string to bring that all in here. So that in itself will give us, you know, our inline editing and our classes that we're going to use to style this thing. So that's believe it or not, all we have to do for the PHP side of things. So we're going to move on now down to the JS side of things. And this is going to look pretty familiar. We're going to be using um, some JavaScript inside of here, but don't you fret. It's going to uh, make sense in the end here. So the first thing that we have to do is, oh boy, it's all sorts of malformatted just because my editor doesn't know what we're doing. <laughs> 
So we have this uh, view and that's kind of like settings. So what we have up here is we have settings, down here we have view. And we're doing add inline editing attributes, label, basic, just kind of like what we had up there. And then down here we have our uh, add render attribute as well, where we're also giving it label heading and the class that we wanna do. So it's very mirrored to what's going on up here, minus we don't have this settings, this gets settings for display. It just kind of works down here. And so what we have to do after that is we have this, um, our actually put out the HTML that we want. So we have our block of HTML, and then we use kind of this same thing, string label heading. And then we're actually outputting the values. We're just using these triple brackets settings dot the thing that we need. So just like we're echoing it out of an array here, we are um, dis uh, printing it out from this object inside of here. And then just wrapped around it are all just kind of your basic classes that we um, will use in CSS to style in just a second. So as it stands right now, let's take a look at what we've got going on. So I'm gonna reload. And then we have our um, information that we had earlier. So if we can, we can click into this and we can start editing some text and then all of a sudden it starts to show up over here on the right. And we can do the same thing up here. My name is Alex. And then this label heading, we can say this is not a test. And then we can double click inside of here and we can actually start uh, editing in line. If you highlight something, you can bold it. There we go. So really the only thing left to do here is just toss in a couple CSS classes, which I have pre-prepared for us just for the sake of time. I'm gonna go down to style.css and go all the way down to the bottom of 2020 and hit uh, paste in just a couple little CSS things and we are going to refresh this. And now we have our beautiful advertisement. So this is a super basic example of how to get inline editing in with Elementor and how to get a basic custom widget going. So there's a lot more to explore here. And if you guys wanna know more about how to do this custom stuff with Elementor, whether you're using this for um, like a headless setup, kind of like I did in some of my previous videos, which I'll put a card up in at the top right now, or you just want to satisfy some client needs with just a custom widget that doesn't exist out there and you need to do something that's super specific to them. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment if you have any questions, like the video if you did, and I will see you in the next one.